Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I did a video a while back on creating a laser production template for production runs. And a lot of people have downloaded it and used it and cut out wood and cardboard templates with it so that they could line up their work. And recently I just did another one on perfect framing and I, I get a lot of the same questions from both of them. So today we're gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna show you how to burn a waste grid today. And this is something that burns permanently into your wasteboard. Now one thing that you do have to know is that your wasteboard has to be permanently attached for this to work properly. You need to attach the legs to it somehow. There's multiple different ways you can do that. I'm sure you can figure that one out. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to open a file and I've got this brand new grid that I just did. And one of the first things you're going to notice when you open this file are the project notes. It's going to automatically open. So in here, you can make this bigger so that you can see it better. And this file was created for a 20 watt diode laser. And I've put in here what my layers were, my 00 layer, my 01 layer, and the burn time. It's about 11 minutes. Now, if you have a different powered laser, all you have to do is simply adjust the speed and the power based on how many watts you have. And the second thing that's really important is making sure that you focus properly. For some reason, a lot of people forget to focus their laser. So in here are all the steps, the first use steps and the repeat use steps. And there'll be a link to this video as well if you need to rewatch it. So we've opened up this file and what you see here are shapes that we use regularly. So there are squares, there are rectangles and circles can fit inside the squares. So we don't need to have circles on here. This is a new updated version I know a lot of you got my old one that was slightly different with all the circles on it. And then <laughs> I realized you don't need circles because they fit perfectly in these squares. I've gone ahead and updated this file. And I want you to notice that when you select it, it's all grouped together. The important thing to note is that when you burn this, you have to burn it on the center of your work bed. So it has to be perfectly centered before you burn it. The way to move everything really is by this center handle right here. So grab it by the center handle, get it to the center of your bed or where you think it is, and then press your control key and just tap the arrow key until you get it exactly where you think the center of your bed is. Now, the important thing to note here is that you can never move this again. And I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm going to answer some common questions that I've gotten. Once you open it, you grab it, you center it, it's ready to go. So all you really have to do is come over here to the laser tab and hit start. Just make sure you check your cuts and layers that they came in the way they're supposed to. In the notes section, the file that opens up, and also in the readme that comes to, in the zip file, I have all of the notes. You'll see that these are the two settings for the 20 watt laser. So adjust these accordingly to your particular laser output, then hit the laser tab and hit start. And this will burn into your waste grid. Once you're done with that, what you're gonna do is click on, on this again to select it all, and then come down here put it on a tool path, either T1 or T2, whichever color you prefer. Now, come up here and save this file once you've done this. And you can never again alter this file because now it's burned into your waste grid. And this is a common mistake that people make. They start designing graphics in here and they move the file. They'll never line up with your waste grid again. But I'm gonna show you how perfectly they line up. Now, the way that you use this file is you zoom way out like that. Drag it off to the side and I zoomed using my scroll wheel and I dragged by just clicking down on my center mouse button and dragging it over. You can also come up here to the drag icon, just click on that and then you'll be able to left click on the screen and drag. So now that that's out of the way, we don't touch that after the first burn. We never ever touch that again. I'm going to come over here to football as an example. Let's see, the Steelers is a good one. I did some coasters for someone a while back. So now you just design your graphic. Now we're all done and we're going to put it in this four inch square, one of these four inch squares. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the top and I'm going to look and see it's 6.38 by 6.38. I want to put it in a four inch square. I'm going to drag this down until I get to about 3.5 or you can just come in here and just type 3.5 and press enter. Now we have it smaller than the square that we're going to use. So now all I do is just drag it over and plop it in and see how it snapped into the middle. I'm not touching that grid. I'm just snapping this into the middle. Now I can zoom in a little bit with my mouse wheel 
And what I'm going to do is, if I hold control, it'll scale proportionately. Okay, so I'm holding control and I'm dragging a corner out like this. I'm going to scale it to pretty close to the square, but not on the line itself. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here all the way around so that I can position it. So now that I know I've got my cuts and layers set properly, the tool path is not going to frame, okay, or burn, excuse me, the graphic will. So I'm ready to just come here to the laser and hit start. I'm going to start the laser, I'm going to film it, and then we'll be right back and I'll show you the results. All right, so here's the results. And you can see, it's not absolutely perfect. I mean, the best thing to do is to create a template so that you can just drop them into the template and go, but it's darn near close. It doesn't get much closer than that. You can't frame it any better than that. I think that came out perfect. So if you want to have a permanent grid where you can align all types of different projects, well, then you can burn it right into your waste grid like this. And that's really it. That's sim it's, it's just that simple, folks. And let's cover the steps again. And this is a, another quickie video. So I'm getting good at these quickie videos, but let's just cover the steps again, start to finish. So you open the file, you go ahead and check your cuts and layers, make sure you have the right Right speed and the right power you focus your laser you hit start now your laser does its job it burns everything into the waste grid and that's it it's done then you just select the image again that I've created here and you put it onto a tool path once it's on the tool path you save it and then you never touch this graphic again except to move graphics into place so now you've got your graphic in place when you're finished just make sure that you don't click on any of these lines you could just kind of move like that to select your graphic again and you can either delete it or you can drag it off the work bed and now you know this is still in the same place if you move it don't worry about it because you can always just not save this file and reopen the original one that you downloaded but it's just that easy folks it doesn't get any easier than this and i hope i answered some of the questions because i've gotten quite a few questions about the waste grid and the main question is my products don't line up properly the second third or fourth time after i've done it once or twice it worked just fine but then the third time it, it was slightly off the fourth time it was slightly off well that's because you move this graphic and that's the reason why i'd love to see lightburn come out with a feature where you could just use this as a background for the screen here that would be great and i've actually suggested this already but for now we'll, we create a workaround and i think this is the perfect workaround and if you'd like to download this file it's available on my online store at engrave and cutfiles.com and I'll put a link down below in the description. So I hope this video helped you and as always I thank you for watching.